Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. I recently had my 50th birthday and I was lucky enough to get a very special gift from my husband. He bought me a 3D filament printer. It's the Anchor Make M5 and I love it. I'm still learning how to use it, but I wanted to have a go at making something that could be used with my J Diction high gloss resin. And so that is what you will be seeing today. How well will 3D prints work with epoxy resin? Let's have a look. The great thing with 3D printing is that there are thousands, if not millions, of files available online for you to download. You don't have to design your own. And so I decided to have a look on Thingiverse for a stained glass design, which I would be able to just fill in with resin and let the light shine through. So I had a look and up came this it's a bird styled um, sun catcher which is just calling out to be filled with resin. So the uploader is Sean Gano and he had several different bird designs so I downloaded a few and tried printing them out and let's have a look how they turned out. So I decided to use black PLA filaments for this. I thought it would work best to make, have like an authentic stained glass look. I didn't have any grey or silver so I went with black. And I didn't change the settings. I just kept them as they were. I haven't really got the hang of changing settings and all of that. I just uploaded it to my software and sliced it and printed it that's as simple as i kept it and it turned out great It took about 30 minutes to print these three so that's perfect no time at all once the printing is finished it just pops off very easily it's just a magnetic board which just clips onto the machine and then all you have to do is pop off the designs from the mat how simple is that I've got to say, so far I'm loving the world of possibilities that this Anchor Make 3D printer has opened up for me. So let's make these into sun catchers. So for my first ones, I decided to use the Shiny Shield Glossy Release Film from Resin Pro. It worked really well for my stained glass window that you might have seen me make recently. So I thought it would be great for this as well. Once it was cut to size, I peeled off the backing paper and stuck it down onto my J Diction levelling table. You need to have a level surface for this, for any resin work really. So my levelling table really does come in handy. It's been used a lot. Then I pressed my birds down onto the sticky side of the film and hoped that they would be nice and secure. There's always a little bit of um, wishful thinking with this and just hope that it won't leak but you know if you don't try you don't know do you so I'm pressing them down really hard you will notice that I printed out some more and there's, there was one bird you saw me printing I'm not using that I decided to keep to this these two design well three designs they've got there's the wing up the wing down and the other more detailed bird. Those were the three I stuck with and I did print out a lot of them because I decided to make a mobile for the garden with them. I thought it would look really nice with it spinning in the wind and so yeah I did lots. So as I mentioned in the intro I'm using J Diction's resin for this and it's the high gloss resin. It's a one-to-one -one mixing ratio and you measure it by volume. So I'm just pouring out I think it was about oh let me think two ounces of A and two ounces of B. I'm guessing here I can't remember I just guessed at the time. I actually mixed up too much so 
you know, you'll have to gauge for yourself how much you will need if you do this. Anyway, I did the same amount of A and B and gave them a good mix. This is my favourite resin from J Diction, but with hindsight, I wish I had some of the four hour resin left. They've got a fast curing resin, resin at J Diction. And I think that would have been better for these because it's thicker and less likely to leak underneath. You will see soon that I did have some problems with the resin leaking underneath the frame. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. <laughs> so yeah, I would recommend a higher viscosity resin for doing something like this. But this was the only J Addiction one I had left. I love it so much, I've used all my other ones up. And it did work a treat, just, you know, like I say, a thicker resin, a faster curing resin will be better. Right, there's a lot to show in this video, so I'm going to speed through the addition of the pigment. But basically, I used mica powders and some white pigment to make it a little bit more opaque looking. I didn't really want them to be transparent. It's just I had a picture in my head of them being quite opaque. I don't know why because transparent would look great with the sun shining through, but still, I had the vision and I wanted to stick with it. So yeah, I added a drop of white to each of the colours and it helped to make it more pastel and more opaque. So one of the most common birds in our garden is the blue tit and I love them. So those were the colours I was trying to get. It has kind of a greeny yellow colour in it so that's why I mixed a little bit of the yellow and blue to get the green. By making the green that way it blends so much better with the two other colours and just complements them perfectly. And then it was time for the fun part, which was adding the colour to the frame. And I found that if you just add it a small amount at a time, it's the safest way. It doesn't matter if it doesn't reach the top of the frame, but you don't want too much and to have it overflowing. That, you definitely don't want that. So just make a puddle in the middle of the space and let it, let it find its own level and then use something like a toothpick or a micro brush to just ease it to any corners where it's just not finding its way there and that's as simple as it is. I'm going to skip to the end of this process now because I've got some robins to show you next. So let's have a look at them when they're nearly finished. So here they are all filled up and I was really happy with them. I think the colour choice worked well. I chose the right shade which I was pleased about and I do think you can tell as soon as you look at them that they're supposed to be blue tits. So yeah, very happy with those. The next ones I'm going to do are the second most common birds in our garden which are robins. But before that, let me show you a problem that occurred. So after a couple of hours, I went to check on them and they had leaked. Luckily, the colour was still in the birds. It hadn't all leaked out, but quite a mess had occurred. What you can see now is after I'd wiped most of it away and it's still leaking a little bit. That's why I was saying the four hour resin, which is thicker and quicker to cure, would have been better. So the shiny shield glossy release film wasn't a success. So I've got plan B here and this one did work a lot better. I've got a sheet of acetate and some PVA glue. And all I'm going to do is use a sponge to paint glue onto the backs of my bird frames and then glue them on. And once they're in position, I put some um, a piece of wood over the top and then something heavy on top to make sure they kept flat and left it until the next day to dry and then did the same thing again. So here they are, all ready to be filled. And as I said before, this is an acetate sheet or you might know it as transparency film and you can get a box full of it for quite a low price really so it works out cheaper doing it this way and it works better so it's win-win and yet I just filled it in in exactly the same way this time I tried to get a bit more of an effect going on in the wings by dragging the um, resin to get like a feather design it didn't 
um, stay brilliantly. You know, it did start to merge as the resin cured, but it was a much more interesting effect than if I'd just let it, you know, just poured in flat colours and it just added a little bit of interest. Right, as I mentioned before, I wanted to make these into a mobile for my garden to go above my garden table. And yeah, so I needed something as a frame to hang them from. So that's the next step. I've got this large plant pot mould and I decided to just fill about an inch of it up at the bottom with some black resin. So it's the same resin as before, the J Addiction High Gloss and I've just put some opaque black pigment in there. Just poured in about an inch worth which was four ounces and once it was demoulded I had a ring which I thought was quite genius, if I say so myself. <laughs> so when it first came out of the mould, it was still a little bit bendy. You do need to leave these things for a day or so to stiffen up, but it does stiffen up better if you take it out of the mould. I found anyway, it's much, much quicker. It needed a little bit of cleaning up, but that was easy. And yeah, then we're ready for the next step. Right before I could go any further, I had some cleaning up to do. If you remember, the blue tits had a bit of a problem. The resin leaked underneath, didn't it? And so I had a lot of cleaning up to do and I actually ended up using my electric sander on the back. And I actually also did a little bit of touching up with a black pen just to bring that black line back. So yeah, I did manage to save them, but because I'd sanded them, they were dull and I wanted to bring them back to life. I wanted the backs to be shiny, just like the fronts. And so I'm using some UV resin because it's nice and quick and I've got lots of UV resin. So it's the J Diction hard type UV resin. It's very good. It's an all purpose one, this one. If you want your UV resin top coats to be domed, I would recommend the high viscosity one. But I wasn't too worried about this being domed. I just wanted it to be shiny. So I just put lots on, teased it to the edges and cured it under my J Diction UV lamp. Right, that's the birds all ready. Now I need to get the frame ready. I drew around the frame onto a piece of paper and marked out where I want my holes to be. And then used the template, paper template to mark where the holes are going to be on the frame. I needed 11 holes, so I needed to use my calculator, but I got there. And yeah, once those marks were on the frame, I used the drill attachment in my Dremel. I found that laying the Dremel down on the table brought the drill attachment to just the right height and so that all the um, holes were in the right place and at the right height. So that worked out perfectly. It's very important when you're sanding or drilling resin to wear a protective dust mask. The better the dust mask, the better really, because it's not safe breathing in that resin dust. So there it is all finished. I pinched the chains from an old hanging basket from my garden and I put those in the three holes at the top and then it was time to thread the birds. I'm just using some very thin nylon thread and you probably won't really be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> I've had this thread for years and years, it's just lasted me forever. And yeah, all I've done is taken a length of it, folded it in half, threaded the two loose ends through the hole because it's easier to thread the loose ends than it is to thread the loop. And then um, just threaded the loose ends back through the loop and yeah, it's hard to explain, isn't it, really? And you can't see it, so I'm hoping you just get the gist. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> once that was on, all I had to do was tie it through the hole on the frame and do the same with all the other birds. And here it is in position in the garden. And I'm really happy with it. I did need to shorten the chains because it was hanging a little bit too low. But yeah, I've, I'm really happy with it. I love the way it moves around in the wind and it looks like a little bit like little birds fluttering around. So yeah, it works really well. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Honey. Hello. Hello. Hello, Bella. Hello, Bella. Hello, Bella. Hello, Bella. Hello, Bella. 
And of course, I can't go anywhere without the pooches following me. Everywhere I go, they go. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't already subscribed and you would like to, please do. Please also give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.